Welcome back everybody. This is Sarah from Dan and Sarah Makers and today I'm going to show you how to wind a bobbin for a very old Conso 201R sewing machine, industrial sewing machine. It's a walking foot machine and it's a little freaky when it gets going full, t <laughs> full tilt. Um, the tricky part about this is you have to be able to see what's going on on the top and also underneath the machine so you can see how I take the bobbin out, how I wind the bobbin, and then how I put the bobbin back in. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to film all this and I apologize ahead of time if it's kind of hard to figure out what's going on. I will try and describe what's happening. Let's get started. This machine has these hinges, sort of hinges, and it's super heavy, but there's a dowel back here where you can tilt the thing back and rest it on that dowel. This is for if you want to change the belt. I don't want to change the belt, but I want to show you what it looks like under here. So this is where the bobbin is sitting, and when I have the needle in the right position on top, then I can just reach underneath the table and pull this little lever on the bobbin case, okay? I can't thread a bobbin easily with thread in the bobbin case. So I have to take the bobbin out. So I'm gonna tilt this back down and I'll show you. I do this just by feel because I've done it a lot. So I'm pressing down the lever to get the presser foot up and I'm moving the wheel to turn the needle, move the needle, and this thing only comes out at one point. I have to wiggle the hand wheel enough. <laughs> now the bobbins do not want to stay off the floor today. Okay, so the, the bobbin is out and it's out of its case. There's the bobbin case. There's the bobbins. The wheel, I had to wiggle it until it would let the bobbin, come out, bobbin case come out. So it's out now, yay. We're going to put the thread into this tension disc set there. And then we're gonna take a bobbin and you want the thread coming out of one of these notches in the bobbin. So you bring the thread through so you have a nice long length of it to hold on to. And then you put the bobbin on here and there is a spring-loaded wire that sticks up off the shaft here. And so when you turn the bobbin, it locks the bobbin into that location so that it doesn't just freewheel there. And then you put the tension arm inside the bobbin. So now it's going to smooth the thread out as I wind it. All right, I'm going to turn the, the machine on. Notice my hands are not anywhere near this <laughs> needle. Most people would probably say take the needle out, but I'm not going to put my hands anywhere near it, and it's just one extra step I don't have to do later. It's also really nice to do this all at once and then rethread your machine and not have to do it for a long time. Also, since this machine is super old, even though I've adjusted the mechanism inside here, it still doesn't have really great tension, so I usually hold this down while I'm spinning it. And you have to kind of adjust all of these things all at once because it's an old machine and it doesn't work quite the way it should, blah blah blah. All right, here we go. So see how the, notice that the 
walking foot is still moving, but it's not resting on the face plate. It's up high. I'm also making this, I'm holding this thread taut, so it's winding itself up and it's going to get so wound up so tight that it's going to snap here in a second. My right hand is holding the tensioning bar on the bobbin winder. My left hand is holding the thread taut until it snaps. My right leg is running the foot pedal and it is also pushing on the leg lever to hold the walking foot in the upper upright position so that it doesn't hit the throat plate while I'm winding the bobbins. So the only thing that's not working right now is my left leg, which is just sitting there. Just like that. Okay, when there's hmm, maybe a 32nd, 16th, somewhere around there, of an inch of bobbin metal still showing, that's a good place to stop. If you put more than that on these older machines, I don't know, maybe even the newer machines, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't used one of the newer ones. Um, for some reason, it'll just start unwinding and it'll make this big ball of knot, knotted thread in the bobbin case. So I don't wind them past about here. This might even be a little overkill, but... So there is a bobbin wound. And then if I want to put it in the case, I make sure that the thread is coming off the bobbin to the right and over the top so clockwise so as it's facing me it's unwinding to the right over the top and then i get the bobbin case and its lever would open away from me to the left and up on top there's a little notch that notch has a tension bar on it and you can change the tension of your bobbin with that little screw right there so I'm going to slide the bobbin into the case and then rotate up with the thread and then into that tension bar and it hooks there. So now when I pull, watch the bobbin unwind, it unwinds clockwise. If you put this in backwards, your life is going to be a mess until you take the bobbin out and you clean all the knotted up, ripped up threads out of your machine. Okay, so if it's not sitting like that, you've done something very, very wrong. So then, I'm not left-handed, but I'll take my case and pull the lever, because now the bobbin can't come out. The bobbin is locked when the lever is pulled back. <laughs> all right. So you want the thread to show at the top, and then you want to kind of push your thumb in to hold the latch open so the, bo the bobbin won't come out. And then you slide it in to the bobbin case holder. And if it doesn't want to go in right away, you might have to wiggle the hand wheel up on top. Once it sits in there, then just let the thread hang loose. I'm just going to really quickly re-thread the top. I've been looking at comments from other channels to see if similar machines. I didn't see any 201Rs, but similar machines, they were saying that some of these tension discs you don't use 
and my experience has been that this is the only way that they work well. I couldn't get the stitches to look right otherwise. Okay, so last little tip. I didn't know about this for the longest time, but to get your thread to come up from the bottom into the throat plate and then up onto the top, you just hold this thread taut and do one stitch, keep holding it, and pop, there's your thread. It comes right up out of the throat plate. So much time saved, oh my goodness, and you're done.